Hello everyone, Lawrence here from Unicorn Reviews. Today we're looking at this guy, the TP-Link Archer C2600. Of those 2600 megabits a second that they promise you, 800 are on the 2.4 gigahertz frequency and then 1734 is on AC uh, 5 gigahertz. Awesome. There's also legacy support for N and G and B and A, all that sort of old stuff which you sh really shouldn't be using anymore, but it supports it. Awesome. Inside here, uh, great processor, dual core 1.4 gigahertz I think it is, plenty of RAM. I never actually stressed it out more than 50% in any of my testing. Great to see. So let's do a quick physical overview. There is no IO on the front and then the first bit of the top is made out of really glossy dust detracting and fingerprint magnety um, glossy plastic. Uh, there's a button here but that button does not power anything, it's just to turn off the LEDs on top. Great that we have it but you are going to touch the glossy plastic with your finger when you press that button and I don't really like that. Uh, above it is a more matte looking uh, ventilated area that also kind of looks like a speaker grill, really cool there. But they've moved all of the I.O. to the left side, which means you have two USB 3.0 ports on the left side. So that's really handy if you want to use multiple USB sticks and all that sort of madness. Now we have a power button, a reset button, a WPS button, all lovely. On the back of the device is where it gets really interesting. We have four um, gigabit Ethernet ports, one gigabit WAN port, as well as a power button and a power input jack. And then of course the four antennas that you see are user replaceable. So you can use your own different antennas if you really want to, but these are pretty good. Of course with routers, usability and features is really important. So that's why I'm going to talk a bit about the user interface. Very beautiful, simplistic, uh, looking user interface. You get a nice login screen with a quick overview of your router being connected to the internet and how many devices it's connected to both wirelessly and wired. If you press the little question mark on the top right uh, you can see all of the data there. Uh, you can go right to settings. Really handy to have it right there and not having to search through everything. For the first time setup or for people who just want to use the quick setup Really easy, you press next seven times and your router will be installed. You don't really have to do anything yourself. But then if you want to start tinkering around with things, you can. So first of all, I'm going to talk about USB sharing. It isn't really a cloud, although there is FTP support, but there's not really cloud sharing like with other devices that I've used in the past. However, it sets up a NAS at your home network. That's basically what a NAS is. Um, so that's really cool to have it right there. You can plug in any USB hard drive or USB stick in there and it will share all the data with all of the network. And then we get parental controls for really trolling your children or in most cases where the children will be installing it, trolling your parents, which is even more fun. Moving to the more advanced settings, uh, you can see statistics on data uh, transfers, which device is using more than other devices. Um, again, the sharing access, you have more information, there are more settings to play with. There is of course also QoS or quality of service for you to set up. I recommend not using it unless you have a really bad internet connection. There are more security settings as well, so you can block certain websites, block certain clients, all lovely. And the blocking clients thing can be done through a blacklist or a whitelist. I would recommend going with a whitelist because it's way easier to keep up to date than a blacklist. There's also a lot of network address translation going on uh, on an application layer gateway thingy. Uh, there are a bunch of ticks there and I have no idea what most of them mean, but it's cool to have it for people who actually do know what they're doing. There are some IPv6 settings as well, so that's really nice to have that you can play around with that as well if your ISP supports it. And then in system tools, you can update your firmware, but not over the internet. So you have to download it on your PC first. A bit annoying. I would like to see that functionality of online updates. You get a system log where you can see what every device is doing or what your router is doing. And then some more system parameters. So you can just set up more stuff. Uh, I would just not tinker with it too much because most people won't know what any of these uh, settings are. If you press the status button, you can also see if everything's okay. Um, so if your internet's okay, if your wireless settings are okay, if the LAN's okay, guest networks also possible with this thing. That's what the status thing is there for. And you can also see that in the performance um, bars, you're never really using the full performance of the CPU or the memory. Of course, what most of you want to know is how does it perform? That's the important thing. Now. With a wire, obviously you get gigabit speeds throughout. 
that's only normal. So we're going to look at what we get here wirelessly on the 5 gigahertz band and of course the 2.4 band as well. So the first test is at one meter away from it with this surface, which is a dual antenna setup. Theoretically, that means it can do about 100 megabytes a second and we didn't get that anywhere. So we're not maxing out anything. Great. Something I found a bit odd is when uploading large files at close range or indoors, it was a bit slower than the ASUS one, whereas everywhere else it was as faster, faster. Um, bit weird. So this is the living room, great performance, plenty, no matter how many devices you're using, plenty to stream 4K video, 8K video would probably work as well at, at these speeds. Same for the bedroom, really fast, but again, we get this slow upload of large files for some inexplicable reason. However, when we move outside, so that's on the terrace, say it's a sunny day and you want to watch a movie while you're laying by the pool, sunbathing, um, it then completely beats it in upload speed. So I don't really know what's happening there. Um, yeah, I really don't know what's happening there, but it is then performing better than the ASUS one, except for the smaller files. And of course, I also like to do an extreme test where these routers can really show off just how awesome they are, because these things are awesome, obviously. And that's the, uh, the garden house or garden shed um, test that I do. It's at 40 or 45 meters away from the actual access point, which also shows that the advertised speeds are not at all possible, but the coverage that they advertise is also always too small. These things are advertised as 465 square meters of coverage. You're actually looking more at 2000 square meters of coverage. Not sure why that's happening there. But at this incredible range, what we can see is that it performs really well, especially small files uploading was insanely fast. All right then guys, so conclusion time on the TP-Link Archer C2600. What do I really think of it now that we've done all this testing? I have to say I really like it. The only thing that I don't quite like is that the I.O. is on the side, which means that if you install it somewhere, you'll have cables coming out of the side as well, whereas you want your USB drives to just plug in from the front. I also don't like the glossy stuff, but no one likes glossy stuff, yet everyone keeps doing it. Other than that, though, it's awesome. Price performance wise, I think it's really awesome. It's 30 euros cheaper than the Asus router I tested last week, yet it performs about the same uh, actually on average in real world usage is it's a bit faster than the asus one i really like that but then as a trade-off you don't get the awesome cloud functionality um, still though really awesome little product if you're interested in one i would recommend you buy it so in short it's awesome i like it i know you guys will like it if you were to buy one um, i don't like the glossy stuff i never like glossy plastic but other than that it's basically perfect so guys Time for me to sign off. If you like this video, press that like button. If you didn't dislike this, I, please subscribe to Unicorn Reviews if you're not already, because it really helps me out a lot and you get to see my awesome new videos right as they get uploaded. So awesome, right? And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching.